I am Sandeepan Chaudhary, a graduate student working in Dr. Barun Chanda's laboratory in the University of Wisconsin Madison. In this brief presentation, I will be talking about our paper estimating the voltage dependent free energy change of ion channels using the median voltage for activation, which appeared in the January 2012 issue of the Journal of General Physiology. Voltage gated ion channels allow ions to cross the membrane when triggered by membrane potential changes. They play a crucial role in the generation and propagation of electrical signals in neurons and other excitable cells. Structural changes are driven by interactions between residues in different parts of the protein. For example, Solbridge interactions involving the S4 charges and the negative charges on S2 are thought to be crucial for gating charge movement. However, we lack a good measure to experimentally quantify these interaction energies or more specifically probe the role of such interactions on the relative stabilities of open and closed states. The most commonly used approach to decipher the importance of residues is by site-directed mutagenesis and quantifying the effect of perturbations on channel energetics. This is frequently accomplished by experimentally measuring the relative open probability of the channel at different voltages and thereafter fitting the sigmoid response to a Boltzmann equation. Under the assumption that channel gating is a two-state process, the Boltzmann fit parameters yield an estimate of the net free energy change during activation. Channel activation is an inherently multi-state process as demonstrated through detailed kinetic modeling studies. Empirical estimates of the free energy change for the activation of shaker potassium channels obtained from the Boltzmann fit to the POV curves do not match that derived from the detailed kinetic models. The POV-based estimates are also sensitive to the stabilities of the intermediate states. As shown in this example sequential transition, altering the stability of an intermediate state without affecting the free energy difference between the end states leads to a pronounced shift in the open probability curves. Therefore, POV curve is not a good measure of the free energy change. This motivated us to consider the energetics of voltage-dependent activation of ion channels from a detailed thermodynamic perspective. We envision the case of a protein which can exist in multiple states and the relative occupancies of the different states can be modulated by voltage. No restrictions are imposed on the nature of charge movement or the number of possible states that the protein can access during its functional cycle. On working through the thermodynamic equations, we find that the net free energy change associated with the voltage-dependent system is given by the integral of the QV curve. Here, Q turns out to be the experimentally determined gating charge displacement versus voltage curve. This free energy difference has two components. The first component is a voltage-dependent term which linearly increases with voltage and is the electrical energy of the system. The second component is the area between the QV curve and the ordinate axis and is convergent. This saturating component is a measure of the chemical energy difference between the initial and the final states of the system which is the parameter of interest. A more detailed mathematical derivation of this principle is shown in the paper. Using the formalism first derived by Jeffries Wyman, we define the median voltage of activation V sub m as the voltage such that the area bound by the QV curve, the median voltage and the Q equals zero axis equals the area bound by the QV curve, the median voltage and the Q max axis. It turns out that the chemical work integral equals Q max, which is the maximum number of charges transferred during activation of the channel, times V sub m, the median voltage for activation. 
we extracted the median voltage of activation for shaker potassium channel and its ILT mutant which has a characteristic biphasic response in the QV curve. On comparing the median estimate of the free energy to that derived from the detailed kinetic models, we see that they are very close to each other. The Boltzmann fit measures derived from the POV curves deviate massively from these estimates. Additionally, the biphasic response generated in the QV curve of the ILT mutant does not allow fitting of a simple Boltzmann equation to it. The final conclusion is that the total free energy change of the system associated with full-scale activation is estimable from the knowledge of Qmax, the total number of gating charges transferred during channel activation, and from V sub M, the median voltage of activation which can be extracted directly from the experimentally measured QV curves. To quantify the effect of perturbations which do not affect Qmax, one needs to estimate only V sub M. The advantage of such a formalism is that no assumptions are made about the number of intermediate states or how they are connected to each other. In our paper, we have verified this formalism through numerical simulations performed on different gating models with inactivation, allosteric transitions, etc.